Hey, hi, uh, Krish. How are you? Uh, I'm good, sir. How are you? Yes, all good. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I have received your resume for the position of data analyst. So, Krish, yes, can you please walk me through your profile? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance to introduce myself. Mm -hmm. I'm Chris Desai, and I'm currently in the last year of my electronics and telecommunication engineering. Uh, since the beginning, I've been always I've always been passionate about numbers and problem solving, which uh, made me interested in the field of data analytics. Mm -hmm. During my studies, I laid a strong foundation in uh, in the technical skills like SQL, Python, Excel, Power BI, etc. And uh, I am. I was generous enough. I, I was lucky enough to use these skills during my last internship. I have also had certifications related to this domain to uh, help me improve my skills. Well, so uh, you said that you were for uh, telecommunication, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, I mean, where did the concept came of data analytics all of a sudden? Uh, so I was uh, uh, I, I was searching I was surfing the internet for my options, and when I got to know about the data analytics, it it just I was very interested in it. Mm -hmm. And during during my childhood, I've always been fond of numbers, and I always used to find the cars number plates very interesting. I always used to look for a specific number plate, a specific color. So when I found out about data analytics, I was like, this is what we will be doing in our career. We will be, uh, we will be having the data, and we will be finding the hidden patterns, trends, the underlying patterns. And it immediately struck me that this is something which I want to pursue in my career. That's when I started to learn my learn the skills and have a foundation on it. Well, so with that, uh, let's start with the you know podcast and. Uh... So, uh, Krish, just let me know how proficient are you in SQL? Uh, I would rate myself a solid 8 on 10. 8 on 10. In SQL. Right. Right. So, uh, Krish, tell me uh, what is the concept and the use case of window function in SQL? Uh, window function is uh, basically used to uh, basically used in aggregate function. When we have uh, different, we basically use it to row, row it over. We we over it by different partitions, and uh, it is basically we can partition it by we can partition it or we can order it, and there are different aggregate function used. So, uh, it basically ap applies aggregate uh, ranking and analytic function over a particular set of rows. Okay, are you sure on that? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. What apart from you know the rank? What uh, yeah, sir. It uh, it also uh, helps to uh, uh, like uh, do it in rank and dense rank functions and row number. What about entire? Uh, sir, I'm not very well versed with entire. Okay. Not an issue. Fine. So, uh, Chris, just uh, write in the chat box. Okay. Uh, just write a query. Okay. How would you write a query to find the second highest salary in a table. Okay. Just mention out the query itself in the chat box. Okay, sir. Done. The second highest? Uh, second highest salary in a table. Salary, okay. Uh, uh, wait a second, sir. Okay. 
So we can use two methods. First is a limit and second is uh, the sub queries. Mm. Uh, I will, uh, sir, should I, I have written the query for using the limit function. Should I also write the query using the sub queries? Yes. Proceed. Okay, sir. Just a minute. Yes. Okay, sure on that? Uh, yes, sir. Well, so coming to the next question. Okay. Uh, Chris, just let me know what do you understand by asset properties in a database transaction? Okay. So uh, I would like to uh, give you the answer based on an example. So whenever we are uh, having a transaction during the UPI, so that's when the asset properties comes in. The abbreviation of asset is atomicity, uh, consistency, integrity, uh, and durability. Atomicity means the, like, let's take an example of a transaction. So atomicity means either the transaction has taken place or it hasn't taken place. There is no in between. Uh, uh, consist, uh, consistency means that, uh, uh, the uh, database has been updated updated from both the tables, like the sender and the receiver. Uh, integrity uh, means that uh, even if there is a power loss or anything, still the table is updated. Like if uh, still the table table in the sense that uh, the sender's table and the receiver's table during a transaction. And uh, uh, durability means uh, uh, so uh, sorry. Uh, um, consistency means that even if multiple senders are uh, sending money to a specific receiver, it makes sure that e each one is an individual disk. And durability is the is where even if there is a power loss during the database, still the transaction happens and it is successfully done. Okay. Well, I hope there is no confusion again. Right? Yes. yes. Sure on that? Oh uh, yes. Okay. Let's get back to the next question. Okay. okay. So, uh, what do you understand, or what can you, how can you differentiate the key points between OLTP and OLAP systems? Uh, sir, I'm not very well versed on it, but uh, I have just, uh, I've just heard it, but I've not gone through it. So. Okay. Online transaction process. Processing. Like yes. And online okay. analytical processing. Okay. Yes. It's for querying online analytical is for, uh, you know, again, querying and reporting, but uh, it's, uh, I mean, OT, OLTP focuses on transaction oriented applications. Okay. Yes. So, yes. okay. With that, uh, uh, Krish, just let me know how proficient are you in Excel? Uh, so I would rate myself uh, around 7, 7.5 on 10. Well, 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 well. So explain how to use, uh, you know, the sum products function and its application. Uh, so we can uh, sum, sum like the, so can you repeat the sentence? Repeat the question? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, my question is, 
I mean, explain how to use the sum product function and its application. Um, well, I'm not very well versed. So, do you, sum means the addition of the. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Sum product multiplies, you know, corresponding ranges and returns the sum of those products, right? Okay. Okay, fine. Not an issue. So, uh, Chris, just let me know how would you use array formulas in Excel. Um, no, sir, I'm not. Uh, okay, I'm not. fine. Uh, do you know how to create dynamic charts in Excel using uh, named ranges? Oh, yes, sir. We can uh, use uh, for the charts, we can uh, collect, select the table, and we can use the option of pivot tables. Uh, and so, pivot can you, table uh, can you explain it a bit more. So, a pivot table it summarizes the data and the uh, it lets you easily compare patterns and it confirms the data, the trends of the data, and it can also, pivot table can also analyze large amount of data. Okay, okay. Well, uh, so coming back to Power BI, what is the difference between calculated columns and measures in Power BI? Uh, so, uh, calculate. Um, so measures is like a fact column where uh, there is a count based on the data, like for example, uh, number of sales, number of sal the salary number, or the marks of a student. And so calculated calculated column, it basically creates a new column based on the existing data. Okay. So, uh, Chris, just let me know, uh, what do you understand by the concept of row level security in Power BI? Uh, row level uh, security, uh, it uh, it basically makes sure that uh, like no the third parties are involved in during the uh, making of a visualization dashboards, and it has uh, it has direct connection with uh, Microsoft Azure as a something. I'm not. I just I just know the concept of row level security. Okay. So uh, let's say that you are on a pro in a project and uh, uh, describe me the steps to optimize Power BI reports for performance, basically. Okay, so first I will uh, first I will uh, look at the database, and I will if I will just uh, remove all the null values. I will just make it clean. Second, uh, I will just uh, create the visualization using, and I will use Power Query and uh, all the different charts in Power BI. And then, uh, and then if, uh, then after filtering and after creating the visualization, there is an option where we can share the, or publish our work using Power BI service. And we can uh, share the report to, uh, to the, uh, to whoever, to the customer or to the, whoever wants it. Okay. okay. So, uh, uh, have you heard about, you know, what is the purpose of query editor in Power BI? Uh, yes, uh, I've, uh, I've heard about it, but... Yes, uh, can you explain I, me a bit? Heard, the query editor, basically, it uh, makes sure that uh, the, uh, like, uh, the, the steps are in the right order and whether you want to change some steps during the visualization. Is it relevant to ETL? Uh, sorry, sir? Is it relevant to ETL? Yes, sir. Power query is uh, relevant to ETL. Okay. How? So, uh, uh, we, we use, uh, if we want to extract or we want to transform some data, we use Power Query itself. So it, it allows us to import a clean uh, and then uh, transform and then uh, modify the data sets. Yes. So right. yeah. ETL operations is done on Power BI using Power Query. So Krish, uh, tell me, uh, I mean, how do you use group by functions in Pandas? I think you will, you will be familiar with Pandas and the libraries using uh, you know, Python. And uh, yes, you may subject to the yes. what are the applications you may follow for that. Uh, so I'm a little bit familiar with Python. Uh, I've 
have not I have not used group by function using okay. Okay. okay, okay, not an issue. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, can you tell me uh, what do you understand by broadcasting in NumPy? Yes, okay. okay. So, well, uh, so uh, Krish, uh, that was the technical side from my end. Okay. And uh, just tell me, I mean, what do you see the difference between a data science part or a scientist part or a data analyst part? Can you give so me the, the key difference? So one of the key difference is that the data scientist, data analyst, uh, data scientist credits the data using machine learning. So uh, a data analyst already has the data and they uh, make a report or they make a conclusion using the data but the main main goal of a data center is to predict the predict using the power, using the data for the future calls they use machine learning algorithms data scientists use machine learning algorithms okay and what about data analyst the so data analyst uh, they basically uh, clean transform and modify the data and uh, they make the reports or conclusion using the existing data. Fine. So, uh, I mean, Krish, uh, why should I hire you? I mean, uh, can you please so, let me know what are your strengths and weakness? Okay, sir. So, uh, one, one of the things which uh, makes me different from the other is my strong enthusiasm in this domain. Uh, I want to learn more and more about this field and uh, using my skills and applying it practically in a company will uh, help myself. It will help me to grow as well as it will help your company to prosper. That's one of my strengths that I am, I'm, an, I have a hunger for growth for learning. And one of my weaknesses is that uh, I Sometimes uh, during any assignment or during any project, I focus on it a lot to make it as perfect as possible. So sometimes it results in an overview that that would be one. Well, so uh, Krish, you were associated with you know the mini projects and your main projects in your academies, right? Yes. Sir. So uh, any mini project or main project related to data, have you done it? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, like uh, from YouTube, I've created uh, various dashboards. I've also uh, various dashboard in Power BI. Also, during my uh, mini project, uh, during my third year project, I had made a, uh, a patient monitoring system, and I had stored the data using SQL in the backend. Also, during my last internship, I had done A/B testing uh, during an email during my company. Sorry, what in testing? My company. Come again. A/B testing. A/B testing. What it is? A/B testing is basically so where we uh, uh, have where we uh, explain something to a n number of uh, people, and we explain another thing to another n number of people, and we see the reviews. And uh, for example, sir, during uh, my internship, uh, we had the say it was a digital marketing company where uh, I had changed the email campaign, so I had uh, stored the uh, previous emails to uh, some number of people and another emails a uh, slogan to another number of people and i had uh, i had seen the difference like uh, who are getting more attracted towards which slogan and that is a good explanation fine so with that uh, uh, krish i'll let you know with the outcomes okay your result will be published soon and uh, thank you for joining today's podcast thank you have a great day okay so can i can i have a question yes. can i just say something yes okay. like uh, i just want to say that uh, so what are the for, i have a question for you that is what are the things that i can improve myself because i'm a last yes. question uh, we will get back to you with the feedback okay so just hold on and uh, we will let you know soon very soon okay okay sir.